Hi, my name is Ugarre and welcome to Hugo's Desk. I've been working in the visual effects industry for over 20 years, either as a compositor, a visual effects supervisor or a director. This video is based on an article I wrote on the Creative Blog website back in September, where I discussed some of the problems facing the visual effects industry today. Problems like the public's obsession with practical effects versus digital, the discord about films having too much CGI, and that CGI is to blame for the lack of quality on today's movies, but also about the general lack of understanding of this industry by the mainstream media and the general public. Basically, this video is my attempt to bring some clarity and suggest some solutions to solve this recent dislike of CGI and visual effects. So without further ado, let's just get on with it. It wasn't that long ago that CGI was considered cool and had the respect and admiration of the general public. Back in the 90s and 2000s, it inspired the entire generation of filmmakers to push the medium in a way that simply was not possible in the 70s and 80s. It definitely inspired me to work in visual effects. Decades later, however, it seems that CGI is not so beloved anymore, or at least that's the narrative that has been conveyed by social media and the mainstream press. So what happened? Why is there a so-called anti-CGI backlash trend in social media today? Why do we have so many articles, tweets, and YouTube videos complaining about CGI and explaining that back in the day it was all so much better. It's very easy to blame the film studios, superhero movies, popular YouTube channels, the press or even the Scorpion King sequence from The Mummy Returns. However, the so-called bad CGI trend is perhaps a deeper problem that has been growing for some years now. But why should we care? We all know social media is not real life. So does it matter that there's a negative sentiment towards CGI and VFX? In my opinion, it does matter. I feel this is a serious problem plaguing the visual effects industry, and it has a real impact how the audience perceives it and understands its contribution. In my view, it already is damaging the credibility of the VFX companies by making them scapegoats of the film industry. The more we are blamed for the state of filmmaking today, the harder it will become to greenlight projects, approve budgets, have a sustainable work-life balance, and it could even dissuade the next generation of artists from joining the industry altogether. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a bad CGI shot. There is, however, and quite often, really bad creative input, confusing feedback, terrible shot design, low budget and lack of time. Not to mention that often films are made by a committee of people that are not so much interested in the creative aspect of filmmaking as they are perhaps in achieving the highest grossing profits. It has become commonplace to say that practical effects are better, more tactile, grounded and even more real than digital VFX. Depending on the concept of the project, this could be the case. And as a visual effects supervisor myself, I do believe that in most situations, the best visual effects is achieved when something is filmed for real, since it serves as a basis for the digital VFX. Having said that, the best films are often the ones which are able to merge everything seamlessly and all departments work together to make an outstanding shot. The so-called VFX experts, forget that if they don't notice the VFX, it doesn't mean it's not there. Photorealistic CG renders have been around for more than a decade, and invisible VFX has been a hallmark of many directors' works over the years. As Andrew Oxen, senior hard surface model at Double Negative, mentioned on Twitter in reference to Dune, a movie he actually worked on, Andrew says, and I quote, Everyone is talking about CG fatigue. But it doesn't bother anyone that 90% of these four images from Dune Part 1 are completely CG. When the director has a vision and we get time to do the work right, CG suddenly isn't a problem. I completely agree with Andrew. I don't recall anyone complaining about too much CG on Dune or any of David Fincher's movies for that matter. I only mention Fincher here because he has become synonymous with invisible VFX since most of his work has hundreds of CG shots. But he's not the only one. 
Off the top of my head, I can think of some films that have not received any VFX backlash, despite of the substantial amount of CG on display. Zodiac, Gone Girl, Mad Max Fury Road, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Tenet, First Man, the John Wick series, Top Gun Maverick, just to name a few. VFX critics don't complain about these films because they are well directed. They have a strong creative vision and use all the tools, both physical and digital, to produce a better movie. Curiously, some people are still convinced that some of these films have no CG at all. For example, a few weeks back I wrote a post on Twitter and I was very surprised by the way it was received. At the time of the film release, most people thought John Wick 4 was all shot practically and it had very little CG, or at least that's what some VFX experts wanted you to believe. And this happens time and time again. It happened on Barbie. It happened on Mission Impossible. It happened on Fast and Furious. Let's also not forget that in 2022, social media was flooded with statements mentioning the Top Gun Maverick was all filmed for real and that no CGI was used. Later we saw how that turned out to be. Once the visual effects breakdowns were released, for instance from the Visual Effects Society Awards or before and after articles, we discovered the amount of CG used on that film. That's why an interesting aspect of this ongoing debate is that although heavy CGI movies have a pretty bad reputation these days, not all films are treated the same way by the critics. Movies like Ex Machina, Interstellar, Dune, Avatar and Blade Runner 2049, among others, are critically acclaimed, were nominated for various awards and won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects. Of course, all these are considered good movies and have achieved a certain status in popular culture, meaning they can do no wrong. Either they have no CGI or the CGI is ignored because it's invisible or the creative vision is so well respected that it doesn't matter how much VFX is in the movie. Another problem that contributes to the misunderstanding surrounding the VFX industry, it's its language. Sometimes when I interact with people on social media who don't work in the VFX industry, it feels a bit like a quibble over semantics where no one really understands what they're referring to. To a great extent, the visual effects terminology itself can be very confusing for both the mainstream media and the general public. For instance, some of these terms are not even used by the industry in the same way people understand them. CG, for example, means computer graphics. And it's usually something rendered in a 3D software such as Maya, Houdini or Blender. This CG can be composited into a live action plate using 2D software like Nuke, Fusion or After Effects. But it can also be a full CG shot, meaning that it's entirely done with the 3D software with no footage, but it was still composited inside a 2D software for final delivery. A more general and broad term, CGI, means computer-generated imagery, and it's less used by professionals in the visual effects industry, since it's not specific enough, and it could mean any work done on a computer. And probably, I, I don't think I've ever said CGI these many times as a recording of this video. The problem is that sometimes both the media and the general public think the CGI and VFX mean the same thing. And although VFX is created with the help of computers, it can also include practical or special effects, SFX, that normally are seamlessly merged and digitally manipulated together with CG elements into the footage. Think uh, like digital de-aging merged with real prosthetics, facial replacements on stunt doubles, or replacing a superhero's real suit with a partial or full CG after the principal photography is finished. This just to name a few examples. For that reason, I think the visual effects industry needs a better way of explaining itself. I know it's not easy because it's a highly specialized industry with a very steep learning curve. And many times visual effects artists struggle to explain in simple terms what they do for a living to someone outside the industry. Most people can understand and visualize what a painter, carpenter or sculptor does, but it becomes more difficult to figure out what a ZBrush artist, a Nuke compositor or an FX TV actually does. These job titles are not familiar to the general public and in a way this creates even more confusion when trying to make sense of the industry as a whole. Therefore, 
it would be useful to develop a more straightforward language. For example, wouldn't it be easier to refer to someone as a digital sculpture rather than the enigmatic zebrush artist? For the record, I have nothing against zebrush artists. They are the best. Of course, I'm not blaming the VFX artists here, just mentioning that we could all improve communication in order to better explain visual effects to the general public. For example, just look at the wonderful work that Todd Vasari, Stefan Ceretti, Ian Fels, Stephen Fleet, among many others, are doing on social media platforms, trying to explain visual effects in simple terms and paving the way for a more mainstream understanding of our industry. We need more professionals to speak openly about VFX. I would highly recommend bookmarking this thread from Todd Vasari, a composter supervisor at Industrial Light and Magic, where for a few years now, he has been pointing out every time a film has been incorrectly promoted as not having any CGI. I would also recommend this amazing video from the Movie Rabbit Holes YouTube channel called No CGI is Really Just Invisible CGI. A great video that points a lot of these topics as well. But why does Todd Vazari even have to point this out? A possible answer could be that the general audience is obsessed with practical effects. But why is that? This trend of saying practical is better than digital might be because many people prefer the nostalgic and romantic idea of craftsmanship in cinema. It's probably easier to understand when one artist creates a physical sculpture or prosthetic piece for a movie than to grasp what hundreds of people working on a computer are actually doing. The fact of the matter is that they are both artists making something new and creative. This artistic divide is further amplified by many official behind-the-scenes featurettes showcasing only the physical nature of filmmaking and seldom the digital or post-production side. Back in the 90s and 2000s, this was not the case. Just look at the amazing behind-the-scenes and extras on films like Twister, Godzilla, The Perfect Storm, Fight Club, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. All of these films have extended breakdowns, interviews, and really detailed documentaries about the practical and digital side of VFX. For some reason, something was lost in the 2010s in terms of showing how a movie is actually made. One of the reasons these behind-the-scenes don't usually showcase VFX process might be because the featurettes themselves were created before the film's post-production even started. This makes it difficult for the VFX behind the scenes to be included in the home releases since the period between the film's theatrical run and the home market is so much shorter than it was before. Another reason could be that today behind the scenes is mostly a marketing vehicle for the film studio. And they don't seem to believe that it's important to showcase VFX or in their view they don't make a great story. Not everything is lost though. Some filmmakers are able to make a difference in the way VFX is communicated to the public. For example, the Marvel movie Eternals has an audio commentary with director Chloe Zhao and the VFX supervisor Stefan Ceretti, which is a treasure trove of knowledge, very much similar to the audio commentaries from visual effects supervisors from the late 90s, from which I've learned so much. In contrast with some studios, directors, actors and producers, which seems to take every opportunity to throw the visual effects industry under a bus. This trend can be problematic because most of the audience doesn't really understand that there are hundreds of people working on a movie. Filmmaking will always be a collaborative process and it's a shame that certain filmmakers still try to convince their audience that large productions are instead a small, with minimal CG, when most of us in the industry know that that is far from it. I'm just complaining here, right? So what can we do? What can be done to address all these issues? Feel free to entertain my suggestions. And if you have more, feel free to write them on the comments. Film studios need to be a bit more ethical with their marketing campaigns and not oversell or misrepresent the way a film is made. We have advertising rules regulating how companies sell their products, and the movie industry shouldn't be immune to such rules or ethical guidelines. If a certain actor is boosting in interviews that they did 
all of their stunts for real and later we find out that actually it was a digital replacement or a CG takeover then they should be challenged on these statements and make sure that all departments involved on the making of that stunt or action sequence including the VFX are acknowledged. Of course the problem is that almost every VFX artist have to sign an NDA so most of the time, the truth about the role of digital VFX in a movie is not disclosed. In my opinion, the studio should allow their artists to speak more freely so that they can be recognized for their work, showcasing their experience, and help the public understand how a movie is actually made. On the other hand, some filmmakers should not contribute to the narrative of no CG is better. What we're looking at here is not CG. No! It's all real. It's all real. I think you feel f when it's fake. You know it's somehow artificial. All of this is real. All of this is real. No one ever says that making a movie without sound, makeup or music would be superior. So why do people say a film is better because it has no CGI? Making it sound like the film is elevated for that reason. Having no CGI on a film is a creative choice. Just like color correction, music, sound or even dialogue. These features and creative choices should not be presented as solutions to make a film better. Some of the things that can really make a difference in elevating a film or an engaging story, great performances, outstanding cinematography, beautiful set design, and amazing VFX, invisible or otherwise, just to mention a few. Having said that, filmmakers sometimes are also guilty of misusing digital visual effects, using it as a tool to solve problems that could have been fixed during filming if, for example, more time had been allocated to the production. Everyone always says fix it in post. I say let's fix it in prep. Also, the mainstream media and the general public needs to verify their sources. A quick Google search or even checking out internet movie database will reveal that most films have hundreds of visual effects artists in the credits. You just need to stay for the end credits to see that sometimes there are thousands of artists working on a film. Of course, unfortunately, not all movies credit every artist. For example, Oppenheimer or missing many artists from their credits. But that is another topic for another day and perhaps even another video. These artists ultimately are not responsible for the creative direction of a film. They produce what their supervisors ask them, and in turn, the supervisors follow the directions from the client, producer or director. The VFX industry indeed follows an established hierarchy so that everyone knows their rules and responsibilities. Finally, my advice to everyone would be, next time you see a bad CGI shot, think of all the artists behind the scenes who had to deal with confusing feedback, lack of sleep, overwork and unreasonable deadlines, making it almost impossible to deliver a good CGI shot. And the next time you share an article or a video in where someone complains about how CGI is killing cinema, do your research and draw your own conclusions based on facts rather than other people's biased opinions. In the meantime, Let's all rediscover great movies, old and new, and celebrate the artists, the crew, technicians, and everyone making them possible so that we can enjoy this amazing art form for many years to come. Anyway, that is all for me today. See you next time at Hugo's Desk. Goodbye.